What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So I know a lot of you uh, probably purchased the Mindsight bundle from Mindsight Studios. They're the, uh, they're the group behind Placemaker and also Artisan and Profile Builder. And actually that may still be on sale today. Um, I'll link to that in the notes below, but it was something like $70 off. I mean, it was like 60% off. So it was a pretty good deal. A lot of people picked that up and basically what it contained is it contained contained uh, three different extensions, um, Artisan, Profile Builder, and um, Bool Tools. And in this video, I, ju I just wanted to make a video and give you kind of an idea of what the capabilities were of those, since a lot of you got that. Give you an idea how you can use those, that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and just jump into it, kind of have some fun with it, and uh, we'll uh, see where it goes. All right, so we're going to start off and we're going to use Artisan um, to create some kind of a terrain type work, that sort of thing. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the sandbox tools to create a sandbox. So we're going to select the sandbox from scratch option, and you see how down in the corner it allows us to set our grid spacing. Well, I'm going to type in five foot, and we'll go ahead and make this a five foot grid. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pretty big grid. I think in this case I'm probably going to do three foot by 300 foot so you can just type in 300 and then th type in 300 foot over here that'll give us a 300 by 300 grid and what that'll give us is that'll give us something to kind of uh, <clears throat> kind of mess with um, what I want to do in this case is I want to use the vertex selection tools and also the move tools and there's some other options in here as well um, but in this case, let's go ahead and we're just going to create some terrain first. And so what you're going to do is um, one of the things that you can do with Artisan is you can do a uh, vertex selection. So instead of, uh, instead of moving your faces around and your lines, what this, what this will do instead is it'll select different vertices or the points between or where these lines intersect. And you can see how I can kind of set that. Um, and I think, let's give that a try. So you can select multiple different areas in here and you can see how as I select them, if I type in a new radius, like if I type in five foot, it changes. If I type in 50 foot, it changes my selection radius size. So all I've done is I've used the vertex select tool and you'll notice if I look down in the corner um, it says the selection mode equals soft. Well you can see how these are different colors. Well the reason they're different colors is because it's saying the things that are red it's going to move more than the things that are blue. So the strength of the selection is kind of falling off as we go. And I think if I just tap the tab key then that'll turn off and that'll go to just hard selection. So you can see how basically what this did is if I tap the tab key and it does a hard selection, it's only showing me the vertices that I clicked on when I did a shift click. But if I do a tab, then it's gonna let me select all of these. So you can see how now, you can come in here and you can select different areas by holding the shift key. And so by doing that, you can create kind of a truly random terrain in here. And so these colors are basically indicating that we have these selected. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to use this vertex move tool in order to actually move those. So you're just going to click on that. You already have these points selected. And then all you're going to do is you're going to click. And in this case, I'm just going to kind of click and drag up a little bit. Um, I just want to create this quick little piece of terrain in here. And so you can see how what that does is that moves all of these pieces in here um, up and down. So, and you can see how this looks a little bit uniform. So probably what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're going to select a different series of points using the vertex selection tool. And I may have to double click back inside this object um, to make sure I can actually select all the vertices. But you can select different points in here and you can just kind of randomly select those. Then you can move them around until you have the terrain that you want. So this is useful for modeling terrains. It's also useful for doing things like uh, um, a lot of people use this for like sculpting and that sort of thing. So um, it's, it's really useful for that sort of thing. Well, now what we have is we've created kind of a terrain in here with this. And, and so what I want to do with this is I'm actually going to use Profile Builder to build a building on this face. And so what I want to do first is I want to come in here and I want to select um, basically an area that I want to be flat. 
And so, and then we're gonna use the make planar option to flatten this out so we can make kind of a building pad in here. And so what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna click and drag across a certain amount of points and you can adjust your radius of selection by typing in a different value. So in this case, what I did is I selected this area and then I typed in 30 feet. Well, what I'm gonna do with this selected is I'm gonna click this option for make planar and it's gonna give me a couple different options in here. In this case, I'm just gonna tell it to select the best plane, and I'm gonna click OK. And actually, probably what we want is probably XY. Yeah, so we're gonna select XY. So what I did is I selected, I selected my building pad area and then I came in here to make planar and I clicked the drop down and I clicked XY. And what that does is that'll take this and it'll flatten it out along the XY axis. So you can see how now I have this flat building pad area in here. And so now what I'm gonna do, cause I've kind of created the terrain that I want a little bit. You, you can go in here and adjust this if you want to. Um, and we may fool around with that a little bit more in a minute. But now that we've used Artisan to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Profile Builder to build a building on this. And so in this case, this is a building that I've already generated and created an assembly for. And if you guys are interested in learning more about this, leave a comment below, I can talk about how I did it. Um, but first of all, I'm gonna measure this to make sure it's wide enough. 60 feet by 135 feet. I think we'll be good, but we'll give it a try and, and see what we can figure out. So I'm gonna click outside of my sandbox that I created um, with the sandbox tools and with Artisan. And now what I've done is I've selected my building assembly. And basically what I did is I created an assembly that has a cover over top of it and then it has some, um, and then it has some kind of curving trusses that it repeats. And so what I can do is I can take this assembly and if I go into the assembly manager profile builder, I can actually click this build assembly button and then click once and then move this across and you can see how that'll actually generate my building for me. So in this case, I can click on my front corner here and then I can tell it, okay, let's say that I want my building to be 100 feet long. What I'll do is I'll lock my, um, lock my tool to the axis by tapping the right arrow key and then I'll just type in 100 feet and hit the enter key. And so what that does is that creates this assembly, or this that inserts this assembly that I created with Profile Builder. So you can see it's just a series of trusses, and you could set this up a different way if you wanted. You could set this up where the trusses kind of extrude along with this if they ran this way. In this case, what I did is I just created an assembly that basically extrudes my cover along the top, and then it repeats my component, which in this case is my truss, every 16 feet. And then it also puts one at the start and at the end. So like for example, if I wanted to, what I could do is I could select this assembly and I could actually come in here and I could adjust my spacing. So let's say I wanted those to be at 12 foot. I could change that to 12 foot and then click the apply attributes. And you can see how that actually adds in smart trusses based on that. So, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move this back on my site a little bit because it actually didn't come in on the flat part of my site. So now I've kind of got my building in here and you can see this didn't get flattened 100% on the backside here. Probably what you could do is you could come in here and let's go ahead and see if we can change that. So if we select this over here, select make planar, pick XY, You can see how that comes in here and that allows you to flatten this out even more. So in this case, we'll do the same thing. We'll pick XY and hit OK and that kind of flatten that out. So that allows us to create our building pad. So we can create our building pad with Artisan, then we can add our building with Profile Builder. And so one of the cool things about Profile Builder is you could actually come in here and you're not just limited to assemblies that you create. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, I'm gonna come into my sandbox that I created and I'm gonna use Selection Toys to deselect all of my faces. All 
All right, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to select all the uh, stuff on here. I'm going to use the extension selection toys to select only the edges in here. And then I'm going to set them to softened and smooth. And so now if I click off of this, apparently nothing is going to happen. There we go. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set all of these to softened and smooth. So now I have kind of a softened face. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the extension um, tools on surface from Fredo 6. And I'm actually going to draw a path all the way around my building. And so you can see what tools on surface does is that'll actually allow you to draw lines along a path. So in this case, what I'm going to do or that'll allow you to draw a path along a surface that isn't flat. So you can see how as I move my mouse along this surface, what it's doing is it's actually drawing the line along that surface. And so by doing that, I can generate a path. And so you can see I was able to generate that path. Well, one of the cool things about Profile Builder is you can actually download assemblies from the 3D warehouse. So if you go into the 3D warehouse, you do a Get Models, and then you type in Profile Builder, you can actually download models that other people have created. And so sometimes they'll work better than other times, depending on how they're set up. Um, but what you can do is, let's say, for example, Let's just pick something simple like this uh, this picket fence assembly. Well, what you can do is you can download that into your model. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to bring that into my model over here. And then you can actually select it using the assembler. So you can click on this get assembly attributes and you can click on this fence. Well, now you can use that assembly in your model. So I can select this path, maybe. There we go. So I can select this path that I created and then I can use the option for build along path. And you can actually generate this fence along this path um, using the assembly that you downloaded. So I can generate a fence all right, so you can see this brings that fence in, and the one thing I didn't really like about it was the fact that it brought it in backwards, meaning all the pickets were on the other side. So there's a couple different ways you could handle this. In my case, I just went in and I adjusted where the profiles were, and then I updated the assembly. Um, if you want to, you can also you could also just draw this manually and just uh, draw it the other direction, and all that stuff would show up that way. Um, for me, it's pretty easy to make these changes because I've worked with Profile Builder a bunch. But either way, just the ability to being able to change everything this quickly is a really big deal. And one of the interesting things for me um, as an estimator is I could come in here and I could actually generate a report using Profile Builder of the entire, of all the length. I could get a count of all of the I could get a count of all of the posts, so I can see that I needed 117 posts. Um, I could get an overall length of your horizontally running wood, and also a count of all of the pickets in here. So you can see how in this case, there's 1,500 of those pickets in here that are one by fours. And then you can see how you have a, a total length of 1,355 of the actual uh, support pieces that are running horizontally. So you can actually use this to generate a lot of useful information. All right, so then the last thing I want to do is um, I want to go back and I want to use Artisan's um, painting and selection options in order to add some materials to my model. So there's a couple different ways you can do this, and this is one of the places where Artisan really shines, is it's got um, a lot of options for selecting different geometry and also painting. So let's take a look at those real quick. So like for example, if I come in here and I select a material like the ground cover, um, sand smooth material, like let's say I wanted like a dirt road up here, you could actually use the, the paintbrush to come in here and paint a material on the ground and I can adjust that brush by tapping the left or right arrow key or also um, by typing in a radius but I can just click and drag on the ground right here and actually generate so I can draw things like roads and stuff like that on my faces 
using the paintbrush. So, and then let's say like the road itself was actually probably closer to like 15 feet wide. So you could actually paint this in and paint things like roads on your, uh, on your faces. So in this case, probably what I would have done is I would have started off and I would have drawn like a ground cover or a grass on here and then I would have gone in and done this. So you'd cover everything with a grass and then you'd use this ground cover to draw this in. So like a 40 foot radius piece. I could paint that in real quick and then I could draw a 15 foot road running down the hill. So you can start working with textures that way. And then the other way you could do this, because this, this gets a little choppy, and you can come in here and you can smooth it out with the paintbrush tool. It's actually really easy to use. The other way you could do this is you could actually use the select brush. So in this case, what I could do instead of painting this in this way is I could select the geometry. So I could type in 40 feet, click and drag to select my geometry, and you can change the brush size and keep adding stuff in here. And so what you could do if you wanted to, instead of painting that material on, you could also come in here and you could select this and you could group the ground geometry. So you could actually put this on here and then you could come in and paint your other faces green. So there's a few different ways with Artisan to do stuff with uh, like textures and that sort of thing. It's actually really cool, really easy to use. So, and like I said, um, those may still be on sale for one more day. So make sure you check out that link in the notes below. Uh, you can also download that by going to the sketchupessentials.com slash mindsight bundle. That is an affiliate link. Um, so if you do end up purchasing, I will receive a commission on that. I always want to make sure that I'm very clear about that. That's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Do you have some ideas for how to use these two extensions? Um, was there something I left out? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. You can check that out in the links down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.